It's just about getting up and doing it and like, you know, finding the time, finding the people and making it happen. You take control and you say, okay, this needs to be done and you do it. And you're never ready to start a business. <laughs> you just either, you either do it or you don't. Welcome to the Jibs Podcast, showcasing Detroit's movers and shakers, bringing you stories that reveal the gusto and grit that's long defined the city and its people. Together, we'll uncover the history and direction of the Motor City, one voice at a time. This is the Jibs Podcast with Jabron Ahmed. Welcome to episode 9 of the Jibs Podcast. Today, I am here with Lisa Ludwinski, founder of Sister Pie. How are you this morning? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, can you kind of tell us about who you are and what Sister Pie is? Yeah, uh, so I'm Lisa Ludwinski. I'm the owner of Sister Pie. I grew up in Michigan and uh, decided that I wanted to start a bakery of my own. And so Sister Pie is here. I've had the business for about five and a half years. And I started it out of my parents' kitchen, and then we worked in our commercial kitchen in Midtown, and now we've been here uh, at this location on Parker and Kirchival for the past almost three years. So what were you doing before Sister Pie? I was a theater major in college, and so I moved to New York City after college to pursue that. But I got pretty distracted by food, as you do in New York. And I started to kind of dabble in that a little bit. I did a cooking show out of my apartment where I would put my computer on top of my refrigerator and film myself making a new episode. I mean, making a new recipe every week <laughs> for a new episode. And after about 100 attempts at that, I uh, worked in a couple of bakeries and kind of got to learn the professional ropes a little bit and then was getting you know, really anxious to want to do something on my own and, and start a business that you know, not only made really kind of delicious and interesting food, but had a social mission behind it. And that's where Sister Pie came along and, and moved back, and here we are. Cool. So how did you, where did your like, thirst for cooking first start? Oh, gosh. Uh, I mean, I think I've always been just a food lover in general, yeah. and I, yeah. I often think back to just eating my grandma's food and the things that she would feed to me like for some reason what comes to mind are like just a plate of cucumbers that she would put salt on and it was such a like seasonal treat that I remember the simplicity of that and loving that and, and that's like one of the first kind of most uh, pure food memories I have but I also my earliest memory of life is like the the only thing I can remember from like age three and under is when my parents would take me to a Cinnabon on Woodward. Uh, this is when I lived in Royal Oak when I was a toddler. And they would kind of lift me up to the countertop so that I could see the employees making the cinnamon rolls. And I was just, I can still picture it in my mind. And I was in awe of it. And that's something that through all of the different things I tried in my life, that memory just stuck with me. And I think it kind of inspired Sister Pie having an open kitchen like we do mm. and this idea of, of being able to really be transparent about what you're doing um, and that's kind of informed our mission here at the shop. So um, it smells amazing in here and it's Thanks. always, you know, people follow you on Instagram, you're always presenting new ideas and new recipes, so how do you come up with these? It's really, what's really great is that we are a seasonal bakery, which means that, um, well, I don't know if you know this, but Michigan is actually the second most agriculturally diverse state in the whole country, second only to California, which means that we have this incredible collection of fruits and vegetables to bake with. I mean, of course, in the wintertime, it's mostly potatoes and onions and carrots, but in the summertime, it's just this incredible selection from the market. And as a baker, that gives me this kind of structure that's needed, I think, for any kind of creative work. So I know that you know I've got rhubarb in front of me. What can I do with rhubarb to make it just a little bit more unique? Maybe something that um, someone hasn't tried before. And so you take it and you turn it into a rhubarb rosemary streusel pie. So you know we're taking these fruits and vegetables and then kind of taking like flavors and concepts that I really like. So that's a lot of nuts and seeds and cheese and herbs um, and alternative flowers like buckwheat and spelt and then even edible flowers like rose and lavender and kind of applying those to the um, to the ingredients and going from there. It's just kind of like what we like to eat. Yeah, that's awesome. What, what are some of your favorite recipes? Well, one of the most like kind of 
simple recipes we do is a pie called the Cranberry Crumble. It's one of the very first pies that I developed for Sister Pie, and it's pure Michigan cranberries. So half of the cranberries go into the pie whole, and then half of them have been cooked down into a compote that's mixed with a little light brown sugar and orange zest. And then uh, the, the filling get, goes into our all butter crust, which is you know just really flaky and made with delicious European style butter. And then we put a, an oat crumble on top. And it's just, to me, it's like ultimate pie. You know, it's got this really tart fruit where you can really taste the flavor of the fruit. And then this just warm crumble on top with a little bit of whipped cream. It's, there's nothing better. But then I also really enjoy, um, we do something called cardamom tahini squash. So it's a little bit more out there for people. It's um, We make our own squash puree, and then at the bottom of the pie, there's a tahini walnut paste. Um, then the, the squash filling goes on top, similar to like a pumpkin pie. And um, then it gets topped with sesame seeds. And it's it's just kind of like pumpkin pie elevated. Oh, it sounds so good. It's really good, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, going back to starting this business, uh, a part of this a part of this podcast is letting people know, um, you know, Detroit's a place where a lot of people are starting to come. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's always been a culture here that's always existed of entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, there really isn't so much a rebirth of the city as much as, you know, more attention just coming to the city. Um, so what kind of made you want to start a business as opposed to just working at another like, bakery or another store? In Detroit, you mean? Like yeah. start working at another bakery in Detroit? Right. Well, I think what what triggered me to, to do this more than anything was being in a bakery in New York and thinking, I have a lot of ideas. I want to do this. I've kind of always had like a naturally bossy personality. And I, when I was in theater, I wanted to be a director. So I, I kind of had like a vision and I wanted to be able to bring the vision together. And so that's sort of where I was going and I had realized that you know my other main passion for life was was being able to just make something and give it to someone at the same time I was feeling a, a, a strong pull back to Michigan you know I grew up here my family is here and I also knew that to start a business here there would be a lot of support not only support from my family and friends but Detroit was offering and I was hearing about all of these entrepreneurial kind of programs and um, opportunities and that was really appealing to me um, and I love the city of Detroit and so it all just kind of worked together when I was kind of piecing together what I thought the next steps in my life would be yeah, yeah. Uh, there's like two camps of people I've come across okay. one is oh we're starting a business here and we feel like there's not enough support in this city there's not a lot of people willing to help us out and then okay. the other camp is like no, Detroit has so many resources, whether it's from the state, the city, or even just other business owners that are willing to help you out and help you start your business. Um, where have you fallen and what's been your experience? I mean, I know that my experience has been really positive in terms of support. I don't know how much of that has to do with you know, the privilege that I experience as well because I have seen other businesses and other entrepreneurial friends who have struggled more to receive the support that they need. Um, and you know, something that I always attribute to our success is that I was able to have kind of the luxury of moving in with my parents after I came back from New York and committing myself completely to Sister Pie. Most business owners who are starting don't have that opportunity. I know I'm getting kind of off topic, but I think it's just important to recognize, you know, the support isn't just there for nothing. You know, you have to do a lot of work to get the support as well. And not everyone who's starting a business has all the time in the world. Usually they're working a full-time job, maybe they have kids, maybe they have lots of other responsibilities. And I I can imagine that it would be really, really tough to do that with those other things. And I know that I was just so lucky to be able to live in my childhood bedroom <laughs> and have my parents let me, you know, experiment in their ovens while I, you know, saved every penny that I could and, and just made it happen. Um, so that is, I think, a major reason why I was able to like just contribute a lot of effort and time to developing the business, which then helped lead me to more um, resources, I think, yeah. if that makes sense. That totally makes yeah. sense. What, so what kind of challenges did you face even starting a business in the city? I mean, I don't know... I mean, I think 
my challenges don't feel unique to Detroit. Right. Um, because I don't know what it's like to open a business anywhere else. Yeah. I think in general, it's just like something that you do kind of blindly, you know, uh, unless you're a professional business starter person, or I guess an entrepreneur is the name. Uh, but you know, I had never done business at all before, um, but I had a passion for something and I think that that was kind of enough. Um, and I was able to then kind of learn some of the business stuff as, as we went along. Uh, the question. Wait, where was I going with that? Um, just like some of the challenges. Oh yeah, general. the challenges. Yeah. Right. I think um, obviously like just finding the money to do it was a big yeah. deal, you know, and that took up more time than I thought. And I don't think, I think everyone kind of underestimates how much it's going to cost to build out, yeah. you know, your business. And so that was a real struggle for me to, you know, think we had gotten enough money and then realize, oh no, we need like 50,000 more dollars. And so, you know, we were able to take out, well, we won the hatch contest and we got 50,000 from that. Uh, we took out a couple of non-traditional loans. Uh, we did a 24-hour da dance marathon uh, where I personally danced for 24 hours straight. We raised $26,000. So definitely kind of getting creative and figuring out how to raise this money um, was a big challenge, but also I think it's, it's something that really drew people to us as well because the whole time that we were doing that, we were doing things that were really engaging people around us. Um, and the whole time we were starting the business, we were very active in in our city, and in, in whether it was in the food lab organization, that's kind of this community of, of businesses who are trying to start uh, food businesses with social missions, um, or even just like being present here in West Village because we were selling at Parker Street Market, which used to be across the street. We were making sure that we were interacting and talking with people that we're going to be our future customers and we're our current customers and so kind of starting the business slowly that way instead of just like flopping ourselves down in the corner and saying we're here you know we had two and a half years where we were kind of testing the waters and I think that that's really important for any business in Detroit because you don't only want the support of you know the people with money you want the support of the people who are going to be affected by your business and who can hopefully enjoy your business and so I think just making those connections is just as valuable as making any other connections. Yeah. yeah. And uh, especially nowadays, I think what attracts a lot of people to a certain business is their, their social activity. So what is your social good attached to this business? So we're uh, trying to be a triple bottom line business, which means that we are trying to support not only our profit, but uh, the planet and people. And so people is our customers, our staff, our neighborhood, um, ourselves, the, the owner, um, and, and our management, you know, like making sure that this business is kind of working for everyone involved. It's a very big challenge and it, it involves just a lot of communication and a lot of willingness to make mistakes and, and start over and try things out. Um, but that's huge because um, we want the people who are here to be happy or to be content and support it. Uh, and then the planet, you know, as a food business, we produce so much waste. And so we're trying to figure out ways that we can reduce that. Um, one way is that we recently started composting with a company called Midtown Composting. And uh, he picks up the compost from a bunch of different food businesses and brings them to local Detroit farms. Um, other things we're trying to do with that, you know, will kind of grow as our business grows. And then, of course, the profit. We need money to run, and so we still have to be, you know, a viable business that contributes to our local economy and, and makes enough money to support our employees and to support the environment and to support the farmers that we're buying our produce from. So those are kind of like our basic um, mission goals that we want to just expand upon as the years go on. Uh, but a great example of just um, a, a very specific one is we have a, a thing called Sister Pie It Forward which is um, on our wall over there. And it was inspired by a pizza shop in Philly that would put, um, allow customers to put sticky notes on the wall for uh, homeless people that had been coming into the shop wanting slices of pizza. And so they could come and they could grab a sticky note. So we kind of took it a step further and said, you know what, we want to make this Pie It Forward idea um, accessible to kind of everyone. So, um, you know, whether it's that you, so a customer can come in, you could, you know, come in and say, oh, I would like to buy a slice of salted maple pie for myself and then I'd like to pie it forward for someone else. And we'd give you a little slip, you'd write your name on it and hang it on the wall. And so that's there for anyone who you know, maybe can't afford a slice, uh, someone who's maybe never been here and is a little intimidated by our flavors and doesn't want to spend four bucks 
not knowing if they're going to like it or not. Um, and then, of course, where you just like left your wallet at home or you don't have the right change. Like, we just want to make sure that people don't leave without having high. And so that kind of helps us. And it's customer supported. And that really speaks to that people element of our business. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Um, so there's a lot of cuisine-based, food-based companies moving into the city, um, all with their own different flavors. Uh, what kind of advice would you have for somebody wanting to start a, a restaurant or a food business in the city? I think I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, and I think one of the main things is take it slow and, and kind of experiment a little bit. And I mean that in a couple of ways. I think for food businesses, the more that you can kind of do pop-ups and partner with other food businesses to kind of get your foot in the door, uh, that's really great because then you can actually see if people like your food, you can hear feedback, um, because it's important to, to make the food that people want to eat, you know? Uh, and then I think with that said, making sure that you're meeting the people in the city and that you're spending time here and if you know what neighborhood you're, you're looking at that you you wait before you just decide that you're going to open a business. You know, this um, city has gone through so much over the years, and I think it's it's very important that we honor the people who have lived here for a really long time and, and do see this change happening. Yeah. And it's important that they're a part of this conversation, um, and that it's not just a bunch of outsiders coming in to say, oh, this is what Detroit needs, and this is what Detroit wants to eat. But, you know, go to a neighborhood and like talk to some people and, and let them try your food. And um, I think that's a great way to just get the process going. Um, because Detroit is not like a city like New York where it's like, how many bagel shops can pop up and can we compete for the best bagel? It's like, you need to have an impact on your community and you need to make that connection because this is the kind of town we are, you know? So that's my main advice. But also, yeah, look into the different opportunities that are offered here, whether it's business classes or money, um, you know, funding programs. Like, there's just so much out there, and it's good to kind of get an idea of what all that stuff is before um, you go in. And I think a, a big recommendation would be to join Food Lab because they have just a wealth of resources on, on all that stuff. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, what are your some some of your favorite places around here? Uh, well, I really like going to Detroit Vegan Soul, which is right around the corner. Yeah. Um, they make a really delicious veggie burger that I like, and then a coconut BLT wrap, which I'm pretty obsessed with. Um, I love going to Sapino for pizza, of course. It's kind of a classic for everyone, but it's so good that I'm going to talk about it every <laughs> time. Um, and let's see. I, do you remember what I said last time? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's those are those two are good. Ones, yeah, I think. Cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what are some things that you're excited about in the near future? Well, um, our cookbook comes out on October second, yeah. and pre-sales actually uh, go on sale today, which is very exciting. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's going to be like the next few months are going to be really kind of us ramping up for that and getting ready for the promotion of it. Um, so I'm very excited about that and, and kind of what that will do for our business. Um, I'm excited about kind of seeing what's next because we're kind of on track for a 2020 growth plan where we want to be able to expand our operation just enough that we can increase our wholesale programs and increase the amount of pie classes that we currently offer, um, which will kind of get us to the next level that we want to be at where we can really start to see those goals we have for our staff be more realized, like yeah. you know benefits and things like that, and higher wages. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to kind of figuring all of that out. Um, and it's just fun along the way. This is a great place to come to every day. We have a really strong um, kind of group energy and vibe and we're you know, always working on communicating with each other and I think we get better and better at it with every you know, new employee that walks in the door. So I'm always energized by that. Yeah. yeah. Well, something I wanted to ask actually is, yeah. I mean, as a boss who has a team under you, um, I mean, what kind of advice would you have for somebody that has their own team that's new to being a leader and doesn't really know how to navigate that space? Yeah, well, one thing that we do, um, kind of speaking to what I just said, was uh, we do a monthly town hall meeting. Yeah. It's something that I wish I had done from the very beginning. Um, it's voluntary. The staff, um, it's a Monday night. We make dinner for them, and we usually have wine or something. And anyone can come. Last night we had like 10 people there out of like 14, so it was pretty amazing. Yeah. And usually we'll we'll, we'll share a little bit about what's going on with the business, whether it's some financial information or some exciting stuff coming up. 
Then we have a suggestion box that we empty and we read out loud what they say and we talk about it. And then we do an open forum where we can talk about whatever's going on and the employees can talk about things that are bothering them or things that they want to change. They bring ideas forward. And you know, the truth of the matter is that the employees are the ones doing the work every day, day in and day out. So they understand and know more about the challenges that we're facing and the, and the things that we need to kind of improve uh, more than even I do, you know? And so to be able to hear that feedback once a month, that only gives them a space to be able to voice it, um, but gives us all of this information that we maybe wouldn't have and connects us as a group much more because, you know, I, it's, not, it's not always easy, you know? Sometimes I just want to be like, I'm making this decision and that's that, but it's always so much more input of, of them because they, they really know what's going on, yeah. Well, uh, can you let people know where to find you? <laughs> we are located at 8066 Kerchival Street at the corner of Parker and Kerchival in West Village. All right, sweet. Lisa, thank you. Thank you. Um, until next time, stay tuned. Cool, thanks. Cool. Great. <laughs> awesome. All right, it's 9.30.